Hey all, this is Anjali and in this video we'll be discussing how to use elif statement in Python for checking conditions. Like in the previous video, we discussed this, how to use if statement, how to use different operators and use if else. The next thing in Python is using if elif to check a series of conditions. So when I have many conditions to be checked and as a programmer, I know that only one of those conditions is going to be true. So I prefer using elif over independent if statements because if I write five if statements in my program, the system has to check all five of them even if the first or the second one is true. It will still check the following conditions. But I don't want to waste time in checking that. I want as soon as it gets the matching condition, it should execute the statements given with it and should stop. So here what happens is, it checks the first condition given over here. If it's true, the statements here are executed and none of these conditions is checked. It directly comes out over here. But if the first condition is false, it checks for the second condition. And if this one is true, the statements over here are executed and we come out. Like this, we can have as many elif blocks as we want. At the end, we can give an else. It's optional. It's not mandatory to give it. So it's my choice if I want to give else at the end. So if I have this else and none of these conditions is true, nothing is true out of this. So whatever you have written here will be executed. But in case I have I don't have this else and none of these conditions is true. So nothing will be executed in your program because none of the conditions match and you don't have an else. So nothing at all will be executed. So whenever you want something to be executed, if all conditions are false, you can give else with the elif statement as well. Let's see how and where can we use this. Okay, let's say I have to make a program to input, which I gave you in the last uh, video to do with if statement. I'm going to discuss that over here with elif statement. So the question was program to input percentage marks of a student. So we had to input the percentage marks of a student and print the grade. And there were some conditions like if it's above 90, you have to print A. If it is between 80 to 90, it's B. If it's between 60 to 80, it was C grade. And below 60, it was D grade. So if I have to write that, the first thing is I need to input the percentage. So I take a variable PER for that. And here I input the value, which is a number. So I take it as integer. Enter percentage marks. Okay. I get the value and then I check the condition. I check the condition that if percentage is greater than equal to 90. If it is so, what should I do? I should print the grade, which is A in this case. So I print grade A, right? And then I go back and here I write elif. It's not else if, it's elif. And then you have to write the condition here. The condition now is that marks should be greater than 80 and it should be less than 90. The ones who are watching the video and who have done this exercise as the assignment of the previous video, you must have done it this way. This is the right way to check if the value lies between 80 to 90 if you are using a normal if statement. But over here, if you write like this, it's okay, doesn't matter. But actually, if we see, we don't need this part and percentage less than 90 is not required. I'll explain you how. Right now, let me just complete this first. Then I'll explain you how can we skip that part from here and we'll see that there is no difference in the output. Either I write it or I don't write it and why that happens. So I have checked if percentage was greater than 60 and percentage is less than 80. It should be print C. And for the last one, I can just give else. That means obviously it's less than 60. So I write D. And that's it. So if I run this code, it will ask me a percentage. I enter 78. As per that, grade is C because 78 lies between 60 and 80. Okay. So we get it this way. Similarly, I can enter any value. Let's say I enter... 95 this time so the grade is a if i enter 
34, the grade is D. So whatever value you enter, it gives you the result. Fine. So what is happening here is if I enter 78, it checks this condition. R is the percentage greater than 90? No. So it comes here. It checks whether it's greater than 80 and less than 90? No. It comes here. 78 is greater than 60 and less than 80. So it prints grade C and it doesn't go here. Okay. If I would have entered 82, so it will check 82 greater than 90. No. False. It will come here. Here the condition is true because 82 is greater than 80 and it is less than 90. So it should print grade B. Fine. Working perfect. But if I remove this, if I remove this thing from here as well as this thing from here and I run the code and I enter 82, it still gives me grade B. That's perfect. This is what we wanted. Now, how is it working here is when it checks percentage greater than equal to 90, it's false for 82. It comes here and checks this condition. So 82 is greater than 80 and it prints grade B. And we don't need to check here that percentage is less than 90 because that is an obvious thing. Because this is LF. If the first condition is false, then only we are checking the second one. And it's obvious that percentage was not greater than or equal to 90. That's why we have come here. So it's obvious that the percentage is less than 90. Then only this condition will be checked. So you don't need to mention it over here. You don't need to write it over here. Similarly, if this condition is false, that means for sure percentage is not greater than or equal to 80. That means it's less than 80. So we'll check if it is greater than 60. It automatically means that it's between 60 to 80. So we don't need to write that here. So even if you write it, it doesn't harm you. But it's not required. But if you are working with normal if statements, then you must give that because that's the only way to check condition in that case. But in case of else if, we can ignore it. So elif statement is checked only when the upper one is false. So from that, we can conclude that we don't need to write the false part of the upper one with this. So it's obvious that the upper one is false. So the marks are going to be less than 90. So if you write it, it's okay. If you don't write it, it's even better. So that's how we use elif over here. Another example we can take for this, let's say I have to input three sides of a triangle. This is uh, this was again the question, but a part of this was there in the last video that was programmed to input three sides of a triangle and print whether it's equilateral or not. This was the question in the last video, but now I'll just mold the question a bit. So it's programmed to input three sides of a triangle and print if it is equilateral isosceles or scalene. So I need to check whether it's equilateral isosceles or scalene. So it would be equilateral if all three sides are equal. It would be isosceles if any two sides are equal and it will be scalene if none of the sides are equal. So we need to check this. So we have to input the three sides first. So I'm going to take the values. Okay, so I have to take the value in side 1, side 2, side 3. Perfect. So we get the values. Now we need to check. We need to check what? If side 1 is equal to, make sure you put equal to sign twice because single 1 is for the assignment to store the value. For comparison, it's always double equal to sign. And side 2 is equal to side 3. Few people make a mistake by writing if side 1 equal to side 2 equal to side 3. You can't write like that. You have to put an and in between this way. So if side 1 is equal to side 2 and side 2 is equal to side 3. That says that my triangle is equilateral. So I can print that. That triangle is equilateral. Now, I'm going to use elif over here. That obviously means now that the three sides are not same. Because if three sides would have been same, the first condition would be true and we get equilateral and nothing is checked after that. So when I'm going to come to the second one, that obviously means that the three sides are not same. Okay, I'm damn sure that the three sides are not equal. Now I need to check, are any two sides equal? Are any two sides equal? That means if side 1 is equal to side 2 or side 2 is equal to side 3 or side 3 
is equal to side 1. So if any of these combinations is true, any of them, because we have or in between, so the triangle is said to be isosceles. Is is and then a colon after this. Yep. So we know it's not equilateral. We know it's not isosceles. So obviously it would be scalene. So what are you going to print over here is scalene. So that's it. That's how we check whether a triangle is equilateral, isosceles, or scalene. So if the side is seven, seven, eight. So it says it's isosceles right if i run this code again and i just give a space here because otherwise it will show them all together like it's coming here 1727 so i just give a space so that i should see the value of the side separately like this it's a scale in triangle if i run it again and i enter the values like this oops i missed entering a value so if I enter 8, 8, 8, it says equilateral. So this is how we can use LF. We also call it as LF ladder because you go down in the ladder only if the upper condition is false. So this is how conditions can be checked in Python. We can also use nesting of ifs. Nesting of ifs means one if inside another if. So if you give one if inside another if, the second one would be checked only if the outer one is true. For example, I want to check for something, let's say, I want to check, uh, say, greatest of three numbers only. So if I have to check greatest of three numbers using nested if else, how would we do that? So we are going to find greatest of three numbers using nested if else. So I have to input three numbers. So I'll just change this to input number one. Input number two. And this should be input number three. Fine. So we get these numbers and we get the numbers in A, B, and C. We did it with if where we use and and everything. But now see how am I going to do this. I check if A is greater than B. Now nesting means you're going to give a condition over here within if. So now if this outer one is true, if A is greater than B, then only it will check if A is greater than C as well. If it is, I'm going to print A is greatest. Why A is greatest here? Because at this point, A is greater than B. And when we check this, A is greater than C. That means A is greater than both B and C. And we can conclude that a is the greatest. But what if this condition becomes false? A is not greater than C. So it comes to this else, else aligned with this if. Okay. So it comes here. Now when it comes here, I know that A is greater than B for sure because we are within this block. So we are sure that A is greater than B. Now this condition is false. That means A is not greater than C. That means the opposite is true. C is greater than A. So when I'm here in else, I know that C is greater than A and A is already greater than B. So that proves that the greatest number should be C in this. So that's how we get this thing. And then we go back here and we give else for the outer if. So make sure when you have like this, if you need an else for the inner if that will come first, then else for the outer if will come after that. Now, when I come to this else, I come to this else because this first condition is false. That means A greater than B is false. If A greater than B is false, assuming that the numbers are not same, I get to know that B should be greater than A, then only we came here. So if A is greater than B, it will go in this. But if it is false, that means B is greater than A, we come here to the else part. And now I'll check if B is greater than C. If it is so, so B is greater than A, 
Now B is greater than C as well. So B should be the greatest number. Else, if this condition becomes false, that means C is greater than B. So in that case, C should be the greatest number. So that's how we write the code using nested if else to do the same thing which we did with if in the last video. So it's 9 is greatest. So this is how nesting of if else works. So we can give as many ifs inside one if and that this nesting can go up to any number of levels depending upon what you want to check. So these are the ways we can use if statement in Python and it's the same way you use in other languages as well. The only thing is a bit of syntax is different to write the command. But otherwise the logic is same and this is how we use if statements in programming and this is your decision control statements or you call them condition control statements and this all comes under the selection flow control that how we select what has to be executed. So I hope you understood what I've explained in this video. If yes, don't forget to click on the like button, do share and subscribe and stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Till then, keep watching, keep learning.